Hey there, working on a little DIY project this weekend. We finally have our um, new pool building, which is a metal building that we had built, um, ready for uh, flooring. And I will walk you through what we're doing today. We are gonna do an epoxy garage floor finishing. And we have just spent the last hour sweeping and um, using water, use the watering can and, and the hose and scrubbing up um, and then wet vacuuming up uh, any of the, the extra dust. Yesterday, I spent about an hour with my orbital sander, sanding off any excess paint and um, and plaster that was left behind by the drywaller. We've already painted all the walls, so I'll let you have a look at that. So here is the building and the room. It's just a studio flat. We've got a bathroom, a storage room slash closet. This is gonna be the kitchen. And we're gonna have a sink and fridge, stove, uh, there's the pool out there, gonna have a little mini living room, TV with drawers, bed, um, and it has been a very slow work in progress, but here is the concrete. Now the concrete is brand new. Uh, they said you need to let it cure for 30 days. Um, it's really, really smooth, so they did a very good job buffing it. Uh, so we do not have an oil-stained garage or anything like that to contend with, but we did have a problem. Um, you know, we don't have a giant garage door to squeegee all the water out and we couldn't go out this way. So what we did was we, we went in this direction. We did the bathroom and the closet first and then we squeegeed everything out and then wet backed it up. Uh, and here are the supplies that I'm gonna be working with today. We've got this Rust-Oleum garage floor coating kit and it's for two and a half car garage. Now we have about 300 square feet, including the bathrooms and things like that. So this goes up to 500. So that should be more than enough. And it's tan gloss. And what I also did was get this Rust-Oleum Concrete and Garage Clear Finish Top Coat. We may not need it, and if not, I can return it, but I wanted to have it in case. And then we got these um, lock-on, things. We got a lock-on pole, we got a lock-on brush, multi-angle, and then we got this big squeegee, foam floor squeegee. And then, of course, we're going to need some of these plastic tray liners, some uh, roller holders with the ability to put the sticks on. This is just a spare stick that my brother lent me. We're going to use these adhesive and epoxy quarter-inch nap rollers. Um, someone else used a three quarter inch nap roller cause he was doing a rougher floor. So if you're like trying to paint brick or anything like that or something that's got a lot of holes in it um, and a lot of dimples, you might wanna go with a thicker nap. But since our concrete is really nice, uh, we don't have to do that. Got some wellies and some gloves. Now this kit includes the concrete etch. I thought I was gonna have to buy that separate. Um, but we will use that next. And then it has the two part epoxy pouches, instruction sheet and the decorative chips that you put on top. And we went with the tan color. Um, here was my orbital sander that I used to get all the excess pieces off, um, off the floor. It's just skill. Uh, it wasn't very expensive. And then my watering can to try to control the acid etch as we put it on in, in chunks. So that's gonna be the next step after we've already wet the floor, let it dry. It, it dried really quickly because we got a good through breeze. So we're ready to acid etch and we're just gonna do chunks again like we did. We're gonna start in the rooms and then go to the kitchen area and work our way towards the door opening. Oh. We got, we got some painter's tape. We might do some painter's tape along the bottom. Now it is new, new paint. We just finished painting two weeks ago. Um, we sprayed it on, but couldn't hurt to do some painter's tape around the base either, could it? All right. 
All right, so this concrete etching comes in two bags of this powder and it says to mix it with two gallons of water. So I'm assuming it's one gallon of water per um, concrete etch powder packet. And it says to uh, pre-wet entire floor using a hose, then remove the pooled water, use a plastic watering can to evenly distribute etch solution over a 10 by 10 space. Uh, scrub vigorously with a brush to remove dust and dirt. Keep entire section wet until it's been etched, rinsed, and then move on to the next section. Once completed, rinse and squeegee entire floor to remove any traces of etch. Do not leave pooled water on the floor. It will not discolor driveways or harm grass or plants if rinsed thoroughly. So we're gonna have to etch and then we're gonna have to rinse and squeegee and keep moving from the kitchen area over here to the, the garage side. Um, and we just wanna make sure that it is rinsed really well. Um, so the fact that I have two sticks is, is really useful because one I have the scrub brush on and the other one I have the squeegee on. Um, I don't think, it says it's mildly acidic. It has um, citric acid. Uh, it does suggest use gloves. Um, don't touch eyes or anything like that with it. So we're going to use the wellies and the gloves when we're handling it. Um, and only one of us is going to handle it. And then the, the other person um, can squeegee and scrub. But we've been using the wet vac to contain certain areas. So um, I think we're just gonna continue using the wet vac. I don't think that it'll be so harmful um, that that's gonna be a problem. And then we can um, pour it out um, into a bucket and dispose of it later. I don't know how harmful it is. Uh, and we can rinse out the wet vac and it should be fine. Okay, so here is my bag of epoxy. Now it's split into two separate bags. Now it says that what we need to do is roll part B, which is the big part, into part A, and that'll break this seal here. And then we have to mix the bag and jiggle it about back and forth for two to three minutes. And then it says um, for temperature of 71 to 80 degrees Fahrenheit, which we're probably sitting at about 74, 75 right now, um, it's 10 minutes induc induction time after mixing. Um, so once it's thoroughly mixed, We'll leave it for 10 minutes and then pour it into our paint tray that's lined with our um, one quarter inch nap roller. Now we do also have another roller that is three eighths of an inch. Um, if we find that this isn't really covering the way we want to, we'll go ahead and swap it out for the other roller that we have. Uh, and this is attached to my lock on pole, which has um, a regular twist side as well as the lock on twist side. So this is just a regular twist and it just goes on like that. And then I have a two and a half inch, which is probably bigger than we need. Probably a two inch would be fine as well. Um, latex paint brush, angled brush, so that we can get into the corners and, um, and along the wall. And we're just going to sort of tag team this. So, we're gonna roll part B, oh, there it goes, towards part A, and then we will jiggle it back and forth for two to three minutes. Okay. All right, so cutting a corner off of the epoxy bag now. It's sat for 10 minutes. And there's our nice tan color. You know what? Oh. Got that. We're about to paint that anyway. I think that's just about filled it up, huh? All right, I'm gonna leave this here for a minute and use some of it and then add some more to the bag when I'm ready. And I've got my little color chips here ready to go. And I'm gonna cut the corner off and just gently Sprinkle them about when we're ready. All right, so let's do the first bit here. Get this paintbrush, I mean, this roller loaded. Now we don't have to be too light with it, but we obviously don't want a huge thick coat either. So we'll do somewhere in between. And 
since we're doing kitchen cabinets on these walls, I'm not gonna worry about brushing it right now. We're just gonna go ahead and start leaving a little room. I think once we get it going a little bit into the roller, it'll end up getting smoother. I think the corners are gonna be the hardest thing, really. I'm gonna twist this around so it's easier to load it up. Right. How long can you wait before adding sprinkles? I think you add the sprinkles at each little section. So we'll do we'll do a decent sized square and we'll add some sprinkles. And then we'll do another square, so like... Do you want me to get in there with the brush? And spread out some of the thicker paint into yeah, the corner? Yeah, maybe. Oh, here we go, I got it. All right. It's just, gotta get this corner going first. It's looking good. Yeah, it's pretty thick. It's really thick and gloopy. It's not like normal paint. I think the tan looks good against the blue. Yeah, I do too. I was wondering about the sprinkles because it's tan and white and black sprinkles, but I think it'll be all right. I'm not sure how much or how little it filmed. Oh, not either. Just film a little more. I'll edit it up. All right, well, I'm trying to smooth out these areas here. And I think that the sprinkles are really going to hide our sins here, too. That's kind of why we thought of going with the sprinkles instead of paint. And the tan, too. And the tan, yeah. So at least it will kind of hide any imperfections that we do. Any thicker bits or anything like that. I kind of feel like this is a decent enough square. Go ahead and sprinkle. kind of harder to do the, the walls. Do this one last little spot, make it a nice square. I think once we kind of get our groove. I don't see it picking up any leftover debris or sand or grit from the floor, so I think we got it cleaned pretty well. That's all about adhesion, isn't it? It doesn't we'll matter. That, in a few months if it peels yeah. off. The sprinkles, will, the sprinkles will hide any debris right. left behind. So, I'm going to go ahead and do some sprinkles now. And I'll start light at first. to drill holes in an old plastic cup. <laughs> Alright, I'm going to go really light to start with. And then we can, we can always add more, but we can't add less. Yep, that looks like a garage floor now. <laughs> Alright, do we maybe want a little more? I say n no more than what you did Yeah. on the right here. So it's not a full garage floor. That looks good. That looks nice. All right. First square done. I don't hate that. <laughs> That's what I'm going for. I'm going for, I don't hate this. Nobody's going to be living there. in here. There, there, there. Yeah, I like that. That's good sprinkle action. Okay, I'll put these down. All right. And we'll just keep moving on. All right, so we've got more than half the room done now. And I'm just trying to work in a very concise pattern. So what I did was I did um, strips, very long skinny strips going across. 
until I got to this point, and now I'm doing slightly wider strips this way, and I'm gonna work my way out. And um, what I'm doing is I'm making sure that I'm brushing one way and then going back and brushing the opposite direction so that I can be sure that it really has proper coverage. But as you can see, looking really good. Got lots of nice fleck. So we, uh, we're not even gonna go through a full bag of the fleck, they gave you two. Um, we, we like less fleck, don't we, honey? Mm -hmm. And then uh, it's a little beachy vibe. Scaling up the tape now. Got a nice clean line so far. Nice, clean, perfect line. Beautiful. That's very exciting. Now the garage looks like shit. <laughs> James, sit down and change your shoes over. So, it is the next morning and we have left the floor to dry overnight and it looks and feels fantastic. It's really smooth, has a nice finish to it. Um, it's already glossy and the flex are in there really well. Um, we left the fan on overnight, but closed up all the windows because we didn't want any kind of moisture because um, we get a lot of uh, condensation and dew in the morning. So today, we're going to take an extra step that's not probably necessary, but we'd like to do it anyway. Uh, and we're going to clear coat the floor with this concrete and garage clear finish top coat that's glossy. And I've even put a cloth underneath my, um, my paint tray because I just don't want it to scratch. Now we heard from a friend who actually used this exact kit in gray and he said that it's fantastic. It has not chipped or peeled or had any problems with any of his equipment in his garage or his dogs. We're walking around in socks because we're just being extra cautious. But it looks good, doesn't it, honey? I think it was the nicest floor we've ever had. <laughs> So the cleanup for this was really easy. All we had to do was take um, the rollers off and throw them away because those are not reusable anymore at that point once the epoxy hardens. And then we cleaned um, the, the roller holders and um, the, the paintbrush with just water from the hose. And the paintbrush came really clean. So we'll be able to reuse that again, which I'm surprised about. I thought we were gonna have to kind of throw it away. But the cleanup for this was fantastic. Um, I'm super surprised, uh, pleasantly so. So here's the clear coat. It's milky in color so that you can see it better. It is extremely thin. Uh, so it's a big change from the epoxy yesterday. Uh, I'm trying to do it very, very gently because I am definitely getting um, some of these roller marks where I stop and start. Um, so I'm trying to kind of go back and roll in different directions. It's going on a lot faster than the epoxy did. So if you can kind of see, see where it's kind of pooling up there. So I'm going back over it to try to just smooth that out. Now I don't know if this is self-leveling I may not need to be doing it this, this nicely. It'll just be what it is, and of course it'll dry clear anyway. Um, but, you know, if you're doing something, might as well do it to the best of your ability, right? Um, but just to give you an idea of how that goes on, it's going on really quickly. Michael's actually doing the bathroom right now. 
and I'm doing the kitchen and I'm already almost done with the kitchen area. I'm halfway finished. So that's what it kind of looks like putting it on.